What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. We appreciate you joining us today and your support. Please press the thumbs up button and provide a brief description of the channel before I continue. AMC was in a dire situation, according to one of the many storylines that have emerged over the past several weeks, months, or really the last two years. The box office would never recover from COVID and we would continue to see major downward trend as streaming became the norm for everyone. Now, Amazon invests $1 billion annually in the movie theaters or movies that will be shown in theaters. Netflix is showing films like Glass, Onion in cinemas, and there are so many absurd streaming services that it would be hard to pay for them all. Right. Again, however, all we need to do is look at the numbers, and the critics will be rendered speechless. Right. Vegas Ape stating that this chart is for all the morons who still believe AMC will go bankrupt. Spoiler alert, not going to happen, right? Consider the meme column, which is the highest since 2010 in 2023. The number of releases will approach pre-pandemic levels, along with popcorn, credit cards, and everything else AMC is doing, indicating that the company will soon achieve profitability. All that is required is a glance at the calendar. Gross, this would be the fourth quarter or year for the box office. I estimate the total to be close to $6 billion, with 467 releases averaging $14.5 million per. Average. Maverick is the top gun pilot. Consequently, the fourth quarter alone appears to be quite astonishing. In addition, nothing similar has occurred since 2010. The film was Avatar. Yeah, great. Again, gentlemen, we have a stunning amount of opportunity to increase this number. Again, it will be absolutely insane to see what transpires in the next weeks. However, what we should be focusing on is the wider picture, what will occur in the future. Now, I have examined various charts and presented them to you before demonstrating that the S and P 500 closely follows 2008's performance. The VX, which is Chicago Born's option exchange volatility gauge, tracks 2008 to the letter. Consequently, it appears that we are not only repeating the cycle of 2008, but also that 2008 never ever ended. I believe we have just returned from a 14-year hiatus, during which Wall Street had too much cheap money and performed the same things repeatedly. Year M2 Super Stock Posting Let's determine the winner from 4. Acceptable are the present VXS and S and P500 movements comparable to those preceding the 2008 market crash? The data indicate yes, correct? Again, the TLDR indicates that it is uncertain whether this association is significant, and, if it is, whether that indicates a crash is imminent, has already occurred or neither. Nonetheless, consider the introduction. There are several relationships, and we will use lagged cross-correlation to examine whether the trends preceding 2008 are statistically comparable to present ones. Again, it's just a more convenient approach to examine this. The data presented here is derived from Yahoo! Finance for both the VX and the S and P500 for the last six months, one year and one and a half years of daily data for 2021 and 2022, ending on December 9th. Obviously, we utilize comparison data for 2007 and 2008, Cutting end on August 22 as the VX soared on the following trading day, marking the beginning of the 2008 market meltdown. Again, the outcomes we observe are somewhat bizarre, right? The delay for these data sets is around 10 trading days. A variation of one trading week is insignificant, and the results are consistent. Taking a look at this subsequent plot, the VX in 2008 and the VX in 2022, the 2008 data finishes immediately before the 2022 data because it shifted to the left on the plot in accordance with the greatest cross-correlation lag that we are currently observing. It appears to be somewhat comparable, correct? Identical in a startlingly similar manner. And it does appear, even at this stage, that we're falling quite rapidly. Same as the previous 18 months, correct? The identical item. In the beginning, there is a distinction between the two options. Regarding the year 2022, there appears to be a small amount of delay here as well. But you know, we're pretty much following the S and P500 index to the letter as well. They correspond to the VIX for a span of six months. At one year, 
the delay is approximately 11 days, whereas at 1.5 years, it is approximately 8. Adjusting for this latency, we may also examine the last 18 months in this case. Due to the fact that the market is so much higher than it was in 2008, they multiplied it by 4 beginning in 2008 compared to what we did. However, it is crucial that data selection is not accountable for the results. We must correlate all of the data from the last few years. Right. Here are a few things to which we must pay close attention. Autocorrelation is also relatively delayed here. Essentially, it appears that we are beginning to observe something really similar across the board. When examining the last few years, the situation has been relatively simple and uncomplicated. So, here are the conclusions that they reached regarding this. Similar to the trends in the VX and the S&P 500 during the prior half year or year and a half, the trends in the VX and the S&P 500 in the half year to year and a half preceding the 2008 meltdown were comparable. The trends are delayed by anywhere from one to three trading weeks, depending on which ticker is used and which window of time is selected, as there is a maximum allowable lag under the methodology employed for this analysis. Given that the market fall has not yet occurred in earnest, three conclusions are feasible. One, that the patterns preceding 2008 coincide by chance. Thus, the current market crash is not indicated by the current market trends. Again, we do not know which one is most likely, but it appears that two, plus a few instances of three, indicate that yes, a market crash is a possibility. The evidence is not insignificant, but current market forces, such as the money injected by the Federal Reserve, the Plunge Protection Team, and Wall Street, are doing all possible to keep the market up. However, we must also keep in mind that apart from this, AMC itself is also experiencing quite a bit of volatility, especially on days like the ones we have just witnessed. But I recognize that people are frustrated, and I believe that a large number of people are frustrated with Adam Aaron, and I also wish to emphasize this point. I acknowledge that there was a time when I distanced myself, but in all honesty, I missed you guys too much. I had no choice but to return. To reiterate, I would like to wish everyone a very happy holiday season, regardless of the holiday you celebrate or the activity you partake in. And you know, we're anticipating some interesting events, correct? I will continue to be present. This will be wonderful. I believe that the next few months as well as the following, you know, you will be quite eventful particularly if you consider the stock market's longer-term trends. But again, thank you all for everything. And long live AMC, as this concludes the video for today. Thank you so much again for joining us. Please give me an enthusiastic thumbs up. Subscribing to the channel while you're there is a good idea. Visit Moomoo in order to sell some free shares. Thank you incredibly, and we'll see you again soon.